Hey, Riddle here. Welcome to my channel. A welcome back if you've subscribed. Thank you. So we're walking out to my property. I am lucky enough that I have a very private, beautiful home with hundreds of acres of uh, undeveloped land in the Redwood Forests in Santa Cruz, California. And uh, I have turned my forest into my own private art gallery. And I, I, you know, some people, you know, they, they like the idea of leaving nature as nature, of course. But, you know, my house is here, so it's not exactly just nature and people hike through all the time. And so I thought, you know, the sadly, most people will never take the time to go to a gallery or a museum to see art, especially here in the United States where we're just not, we're not educated to be cultured and interested in such things. So I decided I would bring the art to the people. So the crazy thing is that people will hike up the mountain and they think they're just hiking through the forest. And then suddenly, oh, they come upon the glittering forest <laughs> or this. This is my latest small installation. So this is a redwood stump. It was chopped down probably a hundred years ago to harvest the wood. It's called a slash and burn and they would cut the redwood, take the mature tree, and then they knew if they cauterized it, if they burned it, then it would clone itself. And you can see the trees growing around it in a circle, or this cluster of trees is actually growing in a circle here. In the center of that was probably a magnificent giant redwood a hundred years ago. But those are her clone. And took this tree stump and I took a piece of fabric, painted it like a beautiful butterfly moth and wired it and then connected it onto the tree stump. And during the day, you can see through the hollow on this side and the light hits it at all different angles. And it just is kind of simplistic, but beautiful, a little breathtaking, I think. When I did this part, what's interesting is I run into people on the hiking trail all the time. And though they, they love the beauty of this, when I try to share with them why I did this, I find a real lack of interest and intelligence. <laughs> and I kind of, you know, it, I don't find that intelligence is limited to book knowledge. I find intelligence, an intelligent person asks questions. It just doesn't look at something that is so odd and just go, uh, so the reason the mirrors in the forest and the broken mirrors in the forest, uh, I did this during a, like a really dark time for myself, um, being overwhelmed with our political climate and the state of the global climate in regards to climate change. And people feel so helpless and so broken and so many people are struggling just to get by day to day. I mean, I really don't know how people do it with children, especially people living in larger cities. And now it's getting hard for everywhere, for everyone, everywhere you go, rent is crazy. So the idea was a lot of these mirrors were donated by people and they were broken when they gave them to me. And the name of this installation is Rebellion Against Darkness. With the idea being that even though we may feel broken inside, broken as a people, we still can choose to reflect light and kindness and joy and generosity off of each other. And I'm a highly sensitive person and I have really high standards for human beings. And it always sets me up because uh, I don't know. My dad is Native American and he taught me never to throw trash on the ground. And I believe that your attitude is, can be a form of psychic trash. So whenever I got into the world, no matter how difficult my day is or what I'm personally going through, or if my chronic fatigue is flaring up and I'm exhausted and sore all over, I always go out with a smile on my face and treat everyone with kindness and dignity the way that I would want to be treated. Now here, I'm not sure if you can see this or not because it's rather late here. I'm gonna to try to brighten it for you. 
This is a giant butterfly cocoon <laughs> with a butterfly coming out of it. It took um, three men, a pulley system to get this up into the redwoods and it's only about six foot off the ground. But the cocoon itself must weigh at least 100, between 130 and 150 pounds. And I made it all from the dead and broken uh, redwood branches. And then it was just really clever with how I brought them together. So it had this very kind of modern but organic feeling to them. Uh, this one's a little more difficult to see. I should have put a brighter colored butterfly. This dark blue is really difficult to see even when the sun's out. But the idea behind this was that, you know, we're losing all of our pollinators. And I just want to people to think about it. And they're out in nature, enjoying nature, but at the same time, are they actively doing the right thing? Nature is screaming right now to be heard. Nature is screaming to be heard. Thousands, tens of thousands of species are going extinct and endangered daily, weekly. And we're just not doing enough. We're not doing enough because we are the reason. We're the problem. This is a life-size unicorn that I made. Uh, the cool thing about this unicorn is that it's made from a tree, and I'll show you the tree here in a minute, called a tan oak. And here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, it's the tan oak is disappearing. It has caught some weird virus or bacteria, and they're all dying. The mature trees, the baby trees, one day, you'll just see they're green and beautiful. The next day it has three or four brown leaves. The next week it has a dead limb. The next month, the little tree's completely dead. So I actually constructed this entire unicorn from dead tan oak. The idea of that, you know, that, that fantasy or the, the myth that there used to be unicorns and they were all, you know, they were all killed or they all disappeared. And the idea that the tan oaks up here in the mountains are dying and disappearing. I just thought that made sense. And it's just strange when I try to share my intelligence with people behind this, that it's not just creativity, that there's a concept and a solid intelligence behind it. They just kind of zone out. I just, it's just kind of shocking to me how stupid people have become. And I mean stupid by just being uninterested uninterested and so difficult it's so difficult to keep people's attention anymore i don't know here's an example of a tan oak that's dying you can see i removed all its bottom leaves usually they're really full like that and it the the, the disease has moved up to this limb and i will have to take out this entire tree probably within the next month okay moving on moving on Sorry if I seem negative, but I have to say I, I, I am become very misanthropic and like I want to go see a therapist about it or something so I can become well adjusted and have some kind of interest in still making art and beautiful things for the world because what people don't seem to understand is art is a gift to the future. And I have the power to record the story and leave that behind after I die which will well survive any children I could have made or any other contribution I could have made. I think you've probably seen this in my other video, so I'm har sorry if this is redundant. Uh, this is my butterfly ball, and it's a giant. It's easily three to four feet across, and it's, um, it's three different butterfly species, and then I embellished it with three-inch round mirrors and the idea behind this was that, again, the pollinators are dying, but the earth is dependent on them. And you find butterflies in every part of the earth. And they are a barometer and an intricate, integral part of the environment and our ecosystem. So I wanted to catch the energy or the feeling of our blue marble, the planet earth, and the spirit of the butterfly and give people a chance to reflect on what they can do to make the changes to save the pollinators and other species and also reflect in the beauty, reflect in the beauty of nature, reflect in the beauty of 
the butterfly. When the wind blows, this gently turns and I just cleared a ton of tree limbs <laughs> yesterday from here and here because now I can look out my the hallway and different parts of my house and I can actually see this sculpture from my house and uh, it, it's it's uh, it makes me really happy it puts a lot of joy in my heart that I can actually enjoy my own work so that's everything I have to really share with you today I'm sorry if I brought you down but you know we just don't have the luxury of ignoring this stuff anymore we need to talk about this and then we need to take action in any way you can. Any, doing anything is something. You know, I look at the kids, the millennials and the kids after them and the kids coming up and you know, I've always recycled. I've always gardened organically. I've always been very respectful of the earth as, as much as I could, but just like everyone else, I have a deal with the devil. I still have electricity. I still drive a car. I still get stuff on Amazon but we're all doing as much as we can, I hope. Okay, thank you so much for coming to my channel. Thank you for opening your minds and listening. And uh, please feel free to leave comments. Hopefully they're kind. And I want you to take care of yourselves and take care of each other because I honestly believe the way we treat each other on the streets, that's our ultimate reality. And uh, if you enjoy my videos, I do a lot of great uh, organic gardening stuff. And I try to come up with things that other people haven't done. And I always try to save money and put out a good quality uh, education and product. So subscribe. It helps. Bye.